So, Carl, Disney Plus has just come out. How many Simpsons episodes have you watched? Yes. Who Shot Mr. Burns is a two-part episode of The Simpsons that revolves almost entirely around setting up and then answering the question posed by the title. Oddly, while the animators and writers went out of their way to insert as many clues as possible into those episodes for Simpsons superfans to figure out who indeed shot Mr. Burns, apparently nobody did at the time. So, Carl, who shot Mr. Burns? Well, for people who don't know, spoilers for a 20-year-old piece of media, it was Maggie. Goddamn Maggie, the best Simpsons character. Goddamn, like, Maggie has to be up there as, like, best Simpsons characters just because it's a fucking baby who shoots people. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, they added layers to the characterization of Maggie I didn't know they had in some episodes. Like, the one where Homer has been attacked by, I think it's the mob, and someone just shoots Fat Tony, and it turns out it's just Maggie. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just Maggie with like a sniper rifle, so what? So good! I like oh, that. So I can't remember which episode it was, but there was an episode where I think they're at a, like a kid's party. I think it was when Rufy was coming to town. Y yeah, like the Simpsons rip off of that guy, yeah. I think they call him Raffy in the episode. Yeah, with that episode, I really like how possessive Maggie gets of the TV. Like someone tries to change the channel and she's like... <laughs> yeah, like a wild fucking animal. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Oh man, it's like I think one of my favourite Maggie scenes at the moment is just like, oh yeah, here's like the ball pit for the kids, and you just jump Maggie in and she just sinks to the bottom. Oh, yeah. And they smash cut later in the episode of like Maggie crawling all the way to the top, and you just get a woman look over and go, add more balls. And, and the thing is, I've been re-watching, like, I think most people have been in the UK these last couple of weeks, is what the fuck else are we meant to do? Just all of the Simpsons on Disney Plus, and you just forget how good early Simpsons was. It's so dense with, like, content and humour. So I watched an episode that I'd not seen in years. Like, I must be about 15 or 20 years I'd not seen this episode. Mm -hmm. It was the one where um, Bart gets that radio for a present and he puts it down the well, where he, like, drops it down oh. the well and pretends to be a trap boy. And it's so episodes. fucking good. It's like, oh, man, we're going for old-fashioned hole digging. So like, I contend that there are some early episodes of The Simpsons that contain more memorable quotes than entire seasons of other animated shows. For example, the episode You Only Move Twice with Hank Scorpio, I would say there are more quotable lines in that one episode of The Simpsons than there are in an entire season of Family Guy. And if anyone out there would disagree, you can fuck off, this is a Simpsons channel. So you mentioned before that during that Who Shot Mr. Burns episode, there was a lot of clues. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to give us a few examples. Yes, and the most obvious one is there is a moment where Mr. Burns himself, after he blots out the sun, which is fucking amazing, by the way, um, like, is confronted by what essentially amounts to every possible suspect for, like, you know, the, the mission who's, like, shot him, posed by the end of that episode. And he asks them point blank, you all want to hurt me, but who amongst you has the guts to actually do it? Or step up, something along those lines. And they have a quick pan across every character who could be a suspect, and every single one of them avoids his gaze or looks away, except for Maggie, who's at the bottom of the frame. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, she's the only one who just continues to stare him the fuck down, <laughs> as if to answer the question of who amongst you has the guts to step up with fucking me. Bring it, Maggie Simpson, let's go. Isn't there also a moment where he says it'll be like taking candy from a baby? And yes, that's like the reason he to. gets shot is because he's taking candy from Maggie. Yeah, and that is revealed in the second episode. But the first episode is where all the clues are laid. And another one is that, obviously the famous one is Mr. Burns lies down on a sundial and he points to South and West, which from his perspective looks like M&S. So Maggie Simpson. And for that clue to not just immediately point to Maggie, during that episode, they threw a few red herrings in, which was revealing the names of a few characters who've been in the series for a long time, but up to that point, not it's like Mo Sislak. Yeah. They only say his last name in that episode to set him up as a suspect. And they do the same thing with um, Principal Skinner, where they say he's got a middle name, that begins with an M, I'm not sure what it is, so he could also be M.S. Well, there's always a silly example that no one talks about. Yes, there is, because he's fact fiend and I like my research. And the most ridiculous little clue I found out that the animators, like, you know, inserted into that episode is that there is a literal blink and you'd miss it shot of when Mr. Burns falls down onto the sundial and you know, points to south and west, where you can see that his holster is empty. And earlier in the episode, he shows his holster with a gun in it, and that's like to show you that he was shot with his own gun perhaps setting it up as an accident that may have occurred. And I found out the only reason the animators included that in the episode is they learned that people were recording episodes on VHS and watching them back. 
So they included that moment for the people who do that so they could go through the episode literally frame by frame on their VHS recording of the episode to look for clues. And that's just so ridiculous because obviously it's on, I think it's like four or five frames of animation where you just say, oh, Mr. Burns' gun is gone, he was shot with his own gun. And you'd miss that if you watched the episode normally, but they wanted and fully expected people to pour through that episode with like, you know, a fine tooth comb to search for clues like, and that being one of them. So obviously they wanted fans to figure out who shot Mr. Burns, so they must have made it into some sort of competition. They did, and the competition is not really talked about much today for reasons we'll get to in a moment. But like, uh, the makers of The Simpsons, they were really keen for people to like, you know, solve this mystery. And like, you know, who shot Mr. Burns part one is like, I think the end of season six. And the answer to it, who shot Mr. Burns like, you know, part two was the like, you know, the opening episode of season seven. So it's like three or four months. So leaving it that long, we were leaving people in suspense, really. Yeah, and they wanted The Simpsons to still be talked about during that time they were off the air. And, you know, a who done it seemed like a very good way of doing that. And, and according to the writers, like Fox were initially quite receptive to the idea of like, you know, turning it to a whodunit episode and offering some kind of a prize for figuring out who shot Mr. Burns. And there were a couple of weird stipulations to that contest that will no doubt be below me right now in a fact bar. But like the funniest part of like, you know, setting up this competition was that when the writers approached Fox with the idea, Fox was like, yeah, I, I guess we could do that. What do you want the prize to be? One of the writers said a million dollars. Holy shit. And Fox was just like, um, no, <laughs> think of a better prize. That is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, he was at the time. It's like in the middle of the night. Fox just went, no. So the writers went away and thought of a different prize, which was a cameo in an episode. The problem was that the person who eventually won the competition didn't want that. Wait, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to be in The Simpsons. That's like an amazing prize. It is, especially for like, you know, a fan of The Simpsons. Because obviously that's who this competition was geared towards. The thing is though, the lady who won, one Fela Gibson, wasn't a fan of The Simpsons and just called up on a whim when she happened to catch the episode on TV and saw there was a competition. Like she just called up and went, I think it, I think her answer was, she says it was Skinner. Yeah. Which you might notice is the wrong fucking answer. Yeah. Which means that she was wrong. And apparently everyone was wrong because like uh, one of the stipulations was we're gonna pick up a, you know, a, a random group of a thousand and pick someone who got the right answer from that. But when they did that, they realized, oh shit, nobody got the right answer. And then they said, well, maybe we could pick another group of a thousand. I went, no, because the way we worded the rules is we have to pick a winner from this pile. But no one guessed right. So they just picked a random answer, which was wrong. <laughs> and it was that Fela Gibson. They called her up and said, oh, you were wrong, but you won. <laughs> she's like, oh, that's great. Uh, what's my prize? Oh, do you want to be on an episode of The Simpsons? She went, no. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't want it. All right, so they picked someone who not only didn't guess the right answer, but also didn't want the prize. Yeah, which I think is a very Simpsons thing to happen, all things considered. But uh, like Gibson did not want the prize. She wasn't interested in The Simpsons. She wasn't a fan. She just said, I want some money instead. And Fox very quietly gave her like, you know, a cash prize instead. And to my knowledge, the amount Gibson was actually paid has never been revealed. And for many years after the episode aired, the writers of The Simpsons and Fox didn't like talking about this competition because it was a huge embarrassing failure because <laughs> like you said it resulted in someone who didn't watch the show guessing wrong winning and then turning down the prize of being in an episode yeah a bit of a shit show and that reminds me if you ever heard of what happened for the simpsons movie something almost identical happened no okay i think the simpsons movie they built a replica of the simpsons house and you know the simpsons house is like bright fucking yellow with pink walls and looks awful and terrible yeah um, someone won that prize and said, I don't want it. I want the cash prize instead. <laughs> so they yeah. built this replica of the Simpsons house. Someone won it, said, I don't want it. And then they had to give them money and then demolish the house. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just... And the fact that it happened twice is just really funny to me. So, Nisha, I'm going to assume that, like myself, you have spent your government-imposed isolation watching an unholy amount of the Simpsons. Um, I've watched quite a few episodes. Not an unholy amount yet. But there's still, there's still a lot of time. <laughs> oh, I did. The, the first day that I got Disney Plus, I watched like two seasons back to back. And I was like, just how fucking good some of the jokes are. And that's like, jokes that I forgot were in episodes that completely took me off guard. And while you think of one, I want to go for one that like, 
me and like you know the group chat I'm in on Facebook and my mates also like Simpsons back. We just could not stop fucking laughing at it. Is when Marge goes and works at the power plant. Do you remember that episode? Vaguely, yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that one. Well, the plot is Marge goes to work at the power plant, but obviously to set that up, you have to have a guy who stops working at the power plant. Yeah. And it's just this really old man, and he's at his retirement party. And they go, "Oh, let's hear from the man of the hour." Because I don't want to quit. My wife left me. My kids don't talk to me. My dog is dead. <laughs> And it's just so harsh. And then they just go, and just like the music starts playing and they just walk him off stage. And it's just, it's so out of left field that it just, it had me on the floor doubled over in agony because I was like beating my fist against the floor. Like, why is it so good? So I recently watched an old episode not seen in a while um, where Homer puts on weight so he can work from home and claim disability. That is a strong fucking episode. And he makes, and he makes that joke where he doesn't want to look like a weirdo, but then it cuts to him wearing that Moo Moo dress. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he goes in. What is it? I think the name of store as well is a joke because there's a lot of like visual gags in the Simpsons that people miss first time round. It's like it's like the vast waistband. So we offer many choices for like, you know the the ample gentleman. <laughs> it's like uh, like uh, Hindu body wraps and moo moos and capes, graduation robes. He's oh like a weirdo <laughs> and just give me the moo moo. <laughs> And it's just, he looks like a fucking idiot. I love he it. He wears the hat as well, which he puts in the wash. Oh, the and fat he's, guy hat. He's like, that's my fat guy hat. And then you have the other one of um, uh, where he goes to like dial the plant because the fingers you have used to dial are too fat <laughs> to obtain a special dialing wand. Yeah. And it's just, it fucking slays me every single time. <laughs> Like the bit at the beginning where it's like Homer hiding in the toilet and gets dragged out screaming. It's like, man, I don't see anyone works so hard to avoid five minutes of exercise. And to end on, we'll talk about like a little minor moment from an episode that I forget. So I'm hoping like whoever's like editing this can find it because it's so throwaway, I just forgot it was in an episode. And obviously when I saw it, it was like seeing it for the first time. And for a brief moment, I was so happy because I was effectively experiencing Golden Age Simpsons for the first time as an adult. And it's just where Homer's just like talking to Lisa or Bart and he goes, yeah, you need to really listen to signs. Like when you see one that says, do not feed the bears, do not feed the bears. And he holds up his arm and there's just a tiny grizzly bear just on his arm, <laughs> just growling. It's like, what the fuck is this? It's like, and I remember looking and going, that, that is how you do a non sequitur, stupid gag and build it into an episode organically. Fuck you, family guy. It can be done. <laughs>